This is the new ASUS ROG Strix XG35 VQ, a premium curved gaming ultrawide monitor. It'll cost you about £800, and for that you get a 35 inch 3440x1440 curved VA screen with a 100Hz refresh rate and AMD's FreeSync. They've also slightly tweaked the design over last year's ultrawides with fancy new RGB lights on the back, which support Aura Sync, so you can sync the lighting with other Asus products. Very nice. But at £800, this is still a very expensive monitor. But then, if we consider that last year's top-end PG348 q is still like £950, that thing never goes down in price, and has basically the same specs, although this has AMD's FreeSync, whereas that had NVIDIA's G-Sync. And also considering Asus's upcoming top-of-the-line gaming ultrawide with a 200Hz refresh and HDR will cost the better part of two grand, maybe it's not such a bad deal. So to get the most out of this monitor with its high resolution, high refresh rate and FreeSync, you'll probably want an AMD Vega 64 graphics card. But it's still great with an Nvidia card, I'm using the 1080 Ti in this setup, it just means you don't get FreeSync, which helps to reduce screen tearing and can help stabilize your frame rate. But you do still get a 100Hz refresh, even with an Nvidia card, which I have to say makes a big difference over 60, you really do notice it. But the other big change this year is Asus's move to VA panels rather than IPS. Traditionally, VA isn't quite as color accurate as IPS, although we're still getting 100% of the sRGB and 81% of the Adobe RGB on this monitor. But the main benefit of VA is much better contrast. We're looking at 2500 to 1 on this, which compares to about 1000 to 1 on a typical IPS. And this higher contrast ratio gives you more vibrant colors, deeper blacks, and overall a slightly more vivid picture, which I really do like. And it's also got a decent four millisecond gray to gray response time. But the other benefit of VA is that it can be manufactured with the quantum dot process, which you've probably heard to do with Samsung's QLED TVs. And that essentially means they can get a lot brighter, which then means they can support high dynamic range. And that's what a lot of the big brands are offering in their upcoming flagship gaming monitors like the Asus PG35V and Acer X35. But back to this one, and we've got plain old VA, not a fancy quantum dot VA. So you only get a maximum brightness of 300 CDM, which is still absolutely fine, but it means you don't get HDR, and also there's no FreeSync 2, which supports HDR. But that's not really an issue, considering the state of HDR PC gaming right now anyway. I really do like the look of this thing though. It's got super thin bezels around three of the edges with a bit of a fat chin at the bottom. The three pronged metal stand looks sleek and robust and the monitor itself is pretty flexible. You can tilt, swivel, adjust the height and even visa mount it if you prefer. Port selection is good too with one DisplayPort 1.2, two HDMIs, although only one is 2.0, the other is 1.4, along with a USB 3 upstream, two USB 3 downstream, headphone jack and power port. Overall though, I'm really enjoying using it. I love the 21 by nine aspect of ultrawides and the 1800R curve gives you an immersive wraparound experience, whether I'm editing videos or playing games. And it's easy to change color profiles or tweak the settings through the on-screen display, which you can navigate using the little joystick at the back. I tend to switch between sRGB modes when I'm editing video and FPS mode when I'm playing games. There is one slightly weird issue I've found with this though. Right on the edges, on the sides, you can actually see, if you've got a bright background, a bit of a shadow behind the screen. Like the panel is slightly translucent and I can see the back of it. It's only right on the edges and it's not a deal breaker or a major issue, but it doesn't seem quite right and not something I've actually ever seen before. But that is pretty much the only issue I have with what is otherwise a fantastic ultra-wide gaming monitor, which I highly recommend. It is expensive, but considering you're getting high resolution, high refresh rate, curved gaming ultra-wide with, a, as I say, really good looking design, I don't think it's ridiculously expensive for what you're getting. Personally, I would prefer G-Sync as I've got an Nvidia card, but obviously that would then add to the price. So that's kind of the trade-off that you're getting. So the Asus ROG Strix XG35 VQ will start shipping late in December and I'll put links in the description when it becomes available. Let me know what you make of it in the comments. Are you a fan of ultrawides? And don't forget to click that like and subscribe button down there and help me get to 200,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for watching guys. I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.